Has the Reserve Bank suddenly turned from a dove into a hawk on interest rates? Where can you find the best term deposit rate? And is the pullback in lithium stocks a buying opportunity? And which stock? I'm Paul Rickard, and there's no Peter Switzer this morning who's working, yes, working hard in the south of France, and I'm mad about money. Shh. Well, the Reserve Bank surprised everyone, us included, with a half percent uh, increase in interest rates yesterday after uh, the previous month only increasing rates by 0.25%, taking the cash rate to 0.85. Now, the market expects another half percent in July, with talks of further a quarter percent in August, possibly September and November, looking at something like about 2% to 2.1% by the end of the year. Well, that's certainly become quite hawkish because... Uh, the Reserve Bank, for months, was in denial there was a problem about inflation, was too slow in terms of the, the, to pull back and its quantitative easing program, made the ridiculous promise that interest rates weren't going up to 2024, and now all of a sudden he's starting to panic about inflation, just as perhaps there are signs, at least globally, that inflation has peaked. Well, we'll see what happens there, but certainly the market sold off yesterday. I think we'll get a bit of a recovery today because of the lead from the States. But um, it is, I guess, uh, in some ways, it's better longer term for the market. If you're worried about inflation, let's get the interest rates up and, and squeeze it down rather than this painstaking sort of mamby-pamby, will we do 0.25% each month? At least at last, the Reserve Bank is showing a bit of guts. Uh, and I think it's actually the right call. So uh, if they're worried about inflation, put the rates up. If they're not, leave them alone. So uh, if you're going to take our medicine, let's get over and done with it. So expect another half percent rate increase in July. Well, that's great news for uh, in investors, particularly self-funded retirees looking at the term deposit market because there are some really some great rates out and offer. Now, the big news this morning is that the first of the major banks, Westpac, is suddenly offering an interesting rate of two and a quarter percent for a period from 12 months up to 23 months. For many of you who are used to 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 on term deposit rates, that might sound like a big rate, but you can do a lot better still by shopping around because rates as high as 2.9% for 12 months are available from the likes of Judo Bank and AMP Bank. Bank of Sydney's got a good rate. So if, you're, if you want to if you're worried about the market or you need just to want to protect your savings or take advantage uh, for that sort of defensive part of your portfolio and look at some of the term deposit rates out there, shop around because there are much better rates available with the smaller banks than the bigger banks. Now, the downside in all this is you need to open a new account, you need to be identified, that's a bit of a hassle, but up to $250,000, remember, the federal government guarantees it. So it doesn't really matter whether your money's with Judo Bank, who many of you may never heard of, or AMP Bank, and we all know what's happened to AMP, or Westpac or CBA, up to $250,000, uh, your money is guaranteed by the federal government. It's the same type of risk. So if there's a higher rate available and you've got the time and energy, shop around because there are some good rates out there on offer. Finally, lithium stocks have had a bit of a pullback over the last couple of weeks as a number of brokers have warned that perhaps some of those crazy forecasts from all the lithium spruikers uh, out there saying that uh, the demand for lithium and the demand for electric vehicles was insatiable, there wasn't enough supply out there, there was a massive uh, difference between the demand gap or, and the supply gap uh, for a number of years. A number of the brokers are now saying that that demand supply imbalance should close and maybe by 2024, 2025, the market might be in balance. Well, uh, not surprisingly, a lot of the lithium stocks have come back. Now, two things to say about that. First of all, we shouldn't be surprised about that because that's what happens in every commodity super cycle, right? That's what, when commodity prices go through the roof, uh, new production, new exploration, suddenly a lot of investment goes into finding new supply. And lithium, is not a rare mineral. There's a stack of lithium out there. It's just hard to get out, it's expensive. But when the price quadruples or more than quadruples than what it's done, suddenly a lot of stuff becomes economic. So we shouldn't be surprised that new supply is coming on stream. Secondly, we've had a pullback. 
Uh, we all know the demand for uh, electric vehicles is going to be insatiable and probably be faster than many predict uh, once, once the infrastructure comes in place and the, and the cost comes down. I think there's a bit of value in lithium stocks and certainly uh, companies like Pilbara Minerals look reasonably interesting. That was James Dunn's tip in our Monday report. If you haven't seen that, read the, the, the Super Report on Monday or the Switzer Report on Monday. I'd look at Pilbara Minerals. I wouldn't put all my money into it just yet, but I think there's a, it's a nibbling opportunity. I, have, I haven't got onto the lithium bandwagon because I've always been worried about uh, the crazy prices out there. But uh, when I see a pullback, I think this might be interesting because you can't deny the long-term trend, trend is in place. I'm Paul Rickard, and I'm mad about money. Shh.